with our Savior on this Monday, Thursday. The palms are gone. They didn't come out until this morning, though. We waited a few days to take them out and put them where they needed to go. But it's good to see you this evening. We begin what's called the three days tonight. And it's all one continuous service, which means at the end, when we strip the altar and that's done, you'll leave in silence. And then when we come in tomorrow for Friday, it just begins right away, leave in silence again. And technically, we'd have a closing after the Easter vigil. Since we don't have an Easter vigil here, we still will leave in silence tomorrow evening or noon, either one. Uh, just a reminder, the stripping of the altar is to remind you of Christ being stripped of his power and glory and is now in the hands of his captors. So that's the image we picture at that moment. Thank Lois for reading tonight and the other helpers that we have. Let us pray. Lord, as we begin these three days, we pray your blessing upon each and every one of us here. Pray your blessing not only upon our loved ones, but your whole creation, all of humanity, all of nature. May it receive your blessing once again. In your name we pray. Amen. Friends in Christ, in this Lenten season we have heard our Lord's call to struggle against sin, death, and the devil, all that keeps us from loving God and each other. This is the struggle to which we were called at baptism. Within the community of the church, God never wearies of forgiving sin and giving the peace of reconciliation. On this night, let us confess our sin against God and our neighbor and enter the celebration of the great three days reconciled with God and with one another. May you remain seated or kneel. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your holy name, amen. God, who is rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead in sin and made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. Almighty God, strengthen you with power through the Holy Spirit that Christ may live in your hearts through faith. Amen. Amen. Remain seated for Lamb of God, pure and sinless.
and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. We pray together. Eternal God, in the sharing of a meal, your Son established a new covenant for all people. And in the washing of feet, he showed us the dignity of service. Grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit, these signs of our life and faith may speak again to our hearts, feed our spirits, and refresh our bodies. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Continue with the lessons. The first lesson this evening is from the book of Exodus, chapter 12, verses 1 through 4 and verses 11 through 14. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, This month shall mark for you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year for you. Tell the whole congregation of Israel that on the tenth of this month they are to take a lamb for each family, a lamb for each household. If a household is too small for a whole lamb, it shall join its closest neighbor in obtaining one. The lamb shall be divided in proportion to the number of people who eat it. This is how you shall eat it, your loins girded, your sandals on your feet, and your staff in your hand. And you shall eat it hurriedly. It is the Passover of the Lord. For I will pass through the land of Egypt that night, and I will strike down every firstborn in the land of Egypt, both human beings and animals. On all the gods of Egypt, I will execute judgments. I am the Lord. The blood shall be a sign for you on the houses where you live. When I see the blood, I will pass over you, and no plague shall destroy you when I strike the land of Egypt. This day shall be day, a day of remembrance for you. You shall celebrate it as a festival, festival to the Lord throughout your generations. You shall observe it as a perpetual ordinance. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The second lesson is from the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verses 23 through 26. For I received from the Lord what I was handed to you on that the Lord Jesus on the night when he was betrayed took a loaf of bread and when he had given thanks he broke it and said this is my body that it is for you do this in remembrance of me in the same way he took the cup also after supper saying this cup is the new covenant in my blood do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me for as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We rise for the gospel acclamation. We read together. I give you a new commandment, that you love one another, just as I have loved you. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 13th chapter. Glory to you, Lord. Now before the festival of Passover, Jesus knew that his hour had come to depart from this world and go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. The devil had already put it into the heart of Judas, son of Simon Iscariot, to betray him. And during supper, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands, and that he had come from God and was going to God, got up from the table, took off his outer robe, and tied a towel around himself. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel that was tied around him. He came to Simon Peter who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus answered, You do not know now what I am doing, but later you will understand. Peter said to him, You will never wash my feet. 
Jesus answered, Unless I wash you, you have no share with me. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. Jesus said to him, One who has bathed does not need to wash, except for the feet, but is entirely clean. And you are clean, though not all of you. For he knew who was to betray him. For this reason he said, Not all of you are clean. After he had washed their feet, had put on his robe, and had returned to the table, he said to them, Do you know what I have done to you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you are right, for that is what I am. So if I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have set you an example that you should also do as I have done to you. Very truly I tell you, Servants are not greater than their master, nor are messengers greater than the one who sent them. If you know these things, you are blessed if you do them. Now the Son of Man has been glorified, and God has been glorified in him. If God has been glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself, and will glorify him at once. Little children, I am with you only a little longer. You will look for me. And as I said to the Jews, so now I say to you, where I am going, you cannot come. I give you a new commandment, that you love one another. Just as I have loved you, you also should love one another. By this everyone will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord. You may be seated. Grace and peace to all of you from Christ Jesus our Lord and our Savior. Tonight we have gathered to celebrate the three days, the triduum of Jesus' death and resurrection, Monday, Thursday, Good Friday, and the Easter Vigil. We celebrate especially tonight by remembering and by acting. First, we remember the original Passover in the Old Testament lesson, the Israelites' deliverance from slavery in Egypt. This deliverance came through God's intervention. The Passover lamb was sacrificed and its blood put on the doorpost of one's home to be protected from death. This remembrance of Passover is still celebrated today by the Jewish community to be reminded of their greatest liberation from slavery and their exodus from Egypt to the Holy Land. And it just so happens that the Jewish Passover falls on this Saturday, the day before our Easter this year. Secondly, we remember Jesus' action as the Passover lamb, whose blood on the cross sets us free from sin, death, and the devil. St. Paul in our Corinthians lessons gives us the earliest recollection in Scripture of Jesus' words of institution of this liberating act. This is the new covenant in Jesus' blood, given and shed for us for the forgiveness of our sins. In this sacrament of remembrance yet tonight, we experience an intimate fellowship with Christ and with one another. Through him and this liberation, we are reconciled to God and to one another. One powerful example of reconciliation in the sacrament was in Mexico City for me many years ago. At that time, in the late 80s, the Lutheran Church still had a seminary in the south side of the city. And it uh, just so happened that two of the professors that I knew didn't like each other that well. And uh, it came out in different ways. They just did not get along together. And on this particular Monday, Thursday night, they came to worship at the bilingual congregation. And uh, when we got to the sharing of the peace during the, right before communion, I can still remember one of the professors, I was at the front, and one professor was sitting in the front row, and the other was a few rows over here. 
And we got up, he said, Lord be with you and also with you. This professor came over and he got next to the other professor. And he called out his name and I just happened to be standing there seeing it. He called out his name and he said, his name, um, I know I've said a lot of bad things about you, etc., etc., but I want us to turn over a new leaf and have a new start. Will you forgive me? And of course, I'm moving along, so I didn't get to see exactly what happened at that point. But I want to believe that the second professor did forgive him and move on. This theme of remembering was one focus for tonight. But the central focus of Monday Thursday is what the name suggests. Monday is Latin for mandatum, meaning command. On this night, Jesus gives a new command to love one another as he has loved us, most exemplified in the washing of the disciples' feet. It echoes the lesson from Philippians that we heard on Sunday from Paul's Christ hymn. Though Jesus was in the form of God, he did not exploit it, but emptied himself, taking on the form of a servant. Jesus performs the work of a slave, washing his disciples' feet, then urging us to follow suit, to do feet, as Dr. Harry Went describes our servanthood. I don't think we identify so much anymore a servant as one who washes feet. More relevant examples of servants might include farm workers in the United States, undocumented persons who do the labor that U.S. citizens refuse to do. Other significant examples of servanthood would include caregivers, those who look out for others who can't take complete care of themselves. That might be family members, especially children with their elderly parents, or spouses with their ailing counterparts. Caregivers surely include those who work in nursing homes, hospitals, and those who provide home health care. Caregivers can be a broad category. And I think in most cases, they do it out of love, even when it is a paid position. Remembering and acting, tonight's dual themes, being set free, being liberated, and then serving. Acting out the love of Christ in the lives of our fellow human beings and all God's creation, including animals, especially our pets. May God bless you in these three days as we experience on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And they just nod into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Provide us the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Jesus draws the whole, whole world to himself. Come to the meal and be fed. Take and eat the body of Christ given for you. Take a drink of the blood of Jesus shed for you. Amen. For this body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, strengthen and keep you in true faith until life everlasting. We pray together the prayer after communion. Lord Jesus, in a wonderful sacrament, you strengthen us with the saving power of your suffering, death, and resurrection. May the sacrament of your body and blood so work in us that the fruits of your redemption will show forth in the way we live. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated as we continue with the stripping of the altar. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? 
Why are you so far from saving me, so far from my cries of anguish? My God, I cry out by day, but you do not answer. By night, but I find no rest. Yet you are enthroned as the Holy One. You are the one Israel praises. In you our ancestors put their trust. They trusted and you delivered them. To you they cried out and were saved. In you they trusted and were not put to shame. But I am a worm and not a man, scorned by everyone, despised by the people. All who see me mock me. They hurl insults, shaking their heads. He trusts in the Lord, they say. Let the Lord rescue him. Yet you brought me out of the womb. You made me trust in you, even at my mother's breast. From birth I was cast on you. From my mother's womb you have been my God. Do not be far from me, for trouble is near, and there is no one to help. Many bulls surround me, strong bulls of Bashan encircle me, roaring lions that tear their prey, open their mouths wide against me. I am poured out like water, and all my bones are out of joint. My heart has turned to wax. It has melted within me. My mouth is dried up like a potter, and my tongue sticks to the roof of my mouth. You lay me in the dust of death. Dogs surround me. A pack of villains encircles me. They pierce my hands and my feet. All my bones are on display. People stare and gloat over me. They divide my clothes among them and cast lots for my garments. But you, Lord, do not be far from me. You are my strength. Come quickly to help me. Deliver me from the sword, my precious life from the power of the dogs. Rescue me from the mouth of the lions. Save me from the horns of the wild oxen. I will declare your name to my people. In the assembly, I will praise you. You who fear the Lord, praise him. All you descendants of Jacob, honor him. Revere him, all you descendants of Israel. For he has not despised or scorned the suffering of the afflicted one. He has not hidden his face from him, but has listened to his cry for help. From you comes the theme of my praise in the great assembly. Before those who fear you, I will fulfill my vows. The poor will eat and be satisfied. Those who seek the Lord will praise him. May your hearts live forever. All the ends of the earth will remember and turn to the Lord, and all the families of the nations will bow down before him. For dominion belongs to the Lord, and he rules over the nations. All the rich of the earth will feast and worship. All who go down to the dust will kneel before him. Those who cannot keep themselves alive, posterity will serve him. Future generations will be told about the Lord. They will proclaim his righteousness, declaring to a people yet unborn, he has done it. 